morning, everyone, and welcome to Astronomy 100. Today is September 27th. Uh, it's actually one of the most important weeks in this class because of two reasons. One of them is the midterm. And uh, the midterm is due next, uh, this coming Monday, actually, October the 4th. However, it's going to be available this week on Thursday. So this is a very, very important week when it comes to uh, exams and because exams have tremendous weight. Uh, last week, you had a chance to actually do the review. I know only a handful of you have been able to do it from this class. I hope you guys don't delay it until the last minute, which is Wednesday midnight, actually before midnight, 11 p.m. So uh, you really, really have to uh, to make sure that uh, that your uh, you do the review, and then uh, you do the exam. So in terms of the examinations, this starting from the second part of last week and uh, this week is is very very important. So it's really important that you guys get on top of it. I know a lot of you received messages from me reminding you about the review. So uh, if you did not do that, and a lot of you did not, because I checked in the morning and there is quite a few of you who did not do it. So I urge you strongly that you really have to do it. I was hoping that you guys work on it on the weekend, but for some reason, people are busy on weekends. It's fine. You still have a couple of days, basically three days to, uh, to do the review, okay? Also, there is another thing also this week, and that is the projects. We will have our first project to start working on. So uh, we need to also get that going. So uh, I know, I don't think it's uh, he or she was in your class who sent me a request about the uh, electrograde motion of Mars, but this pro project really deals in detail about it. So I'm going to talk about that one a little. In addition, to the fact that we're going to be starting, uh, so we're going to go through all of the other uh, components, if you wish, of the solar system. We're going to start with the moon. The moon is actually our uh, our uh, closest neighbor, and then we're going to explore uh, a lot of the bodies in the solar system, mainly the planets, really, and the dwarf planets, or at least some of the dwarf planets and also the moons and things like that. So that's basically what we'll be exploring until we exhaust those, then we turn our attention to the entire universe as a whole, okay? To the galaxy, to the different stars in the galaxy and the evolution of stars, and then we'll get into the universe as a whole. So it's really, a, 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 I mean, we're embarking on a journey, basically leaving the earth now. We're going to go to the moon and we're going to go beyond. That's really the promise. Okay, so let me share with you the screen. Uh, and uh, talk about the details that, in detail about what I was talking about. So let me share the screen. And this is basically what the student would look, would see when he or she basically log in in here. For week seven, we are here. This is where we're supposed to be, okay? And this is the midterm I was making a big emphasis on. And then also we have the review from last week, okay? So if you didn't do so yet, you are strongly urged to do the review. Two reasons, first of all, it's graded. And second, it prepares you for the, uh, for the actual uh, midterm. So it's not an option not to do it. It's not, an, it's, uh, I mean, if you choose not to do it, you're not, you're not gonna get great for it. You're gonna get zero for it. So you really want to do it. And as an added bonus, an incentive for taking it, if you score anything, it doesn't matter what you score in the review, you're going to get the full marks just for attempting it. Of course, it's not it's going as participation grade, but that's actually very, very important grade too, because it adds up and you see it, it's in your syllabus, it's a 10% of your overall grade. So it is worth taking, it is worth uh, starting, it is worth working on. Once you go through it, Canvas will show you the correct answers and you will see your answer. And if you're at ease with it, great. If not, you need to review the materials and then uh, let me know basically if you're still uh, not sure about it, okay? So this is the purpose of the review. 
it is still out there it is graded and you're strongly urged to uh, to take advantage of it and because as i was saying it's important on its own i mean it's it has it has merits on its own and the fact that it's also tightly connected to this midterm which is uh, next which is this the starts opens on wednesday i mean thursday thursday morning i'm sorry it's going to be available thursday morning until uh, monday when it's due again please do not and i know I, no matter how much i say that there are quite few of you who uh, probably will do that please do not leave it to the last day okay do not leave it till when it's due on monday and then start working on it because i will not extend the deadline on it i know that's the day on monday when a lot of other problems happen whether there is an emergency at home, whether there is an emergency at work, or whether there is an, a problem with the internet, or whether there is a problem with accessing some resources that you absolutely need, don't do it on Monday, okay? It is available Thursday, really, this is the day when you're supposed to do it. Had you prepared for it? Had you gone through the review? Thursday is the day. If you must, Friday is actually another option for you. And if really extremely uh, not available on those two days, you still have Saturday, Sunday, worst case scenario. Do not leave it until Monday. And I am saying this one, I know that quite a few will leave it until Monday and they start working on it. And that is not good. Okay. That is not good. So again, this is the midterm. It has tremendous weight overall your, for your grade. So take it seriously, extremely seriously if you expect to pass this class. Okay. This is a very important one. And then, as I was saying, there is a, a retrograde motion of Mars. Let me talk briefly about the objectives of this week first, which are to do with Unit 39, which is mainly about the moon. And uh, then uh, this is the previous week review, which is probably a good thing to look at while you're doing your uh, uh, review, because remember, 37 and 38 are part of the exam. So uh, it's important to make sure that those two units are, are covered. Unit 39 is not. Unit 39 is part of midterm two. So this is not here, okay? 39 is not tested in this exam, okay? So let me open the objectives for the week. And as I was talking about, the midterm will be available this Thursday at 8 a.m., which will be due, or it is due. I'm sorry, I need to make this correction in here. It's not, it is due Monday, October 4th. Okay. I'll have to fix the grammar in here. Uh, the review will end this Wednesday, and that's basically what I was talking about. Okay. So please take advantage of this point. Again, the units for this week deal mainly with the moon, and it's how it was formed and then also it's uh, it's uh, it's how it looks i mean from the outside there are two sides to the moon one of them we always see and one of them we don't see okay and then uh, it's on the other side and that's because of another thing that has to do with the motion of the moon and that is because it's in sync with the uh, with the, with the earth while it's spinning on its axis, it's rotating around the Earth. And these two have the same period. They have the same time. So that's why it's synchronized and it's always giving you the same pace. And uh, one of the main features of the moon are the craters, the impacts basically that you see them sp scattered all around. Then there is this dark spots in the moon, which are called Maria, which is a Latin word for basically seas. Uh, and then you have this highlands, this brighter spots in it. So the darker spots and the brighter spots are the highlands. In addition to these lines in here, they're called rays. And you see them scattered coming mainly from uh, the volcanic, actually volcanoes, I'm sorry, did I say? <laughs> yeah, the, the volcanic activity. So this, they must be uh, uh, flows of lava, flow of lava. Anyway, 
let me talk a little bit about this point in here. I know you're going to be reading in detail about this, this, this topics when you're going to do a, go through this unit itself. But I'm going to talk briefly about these points in here. So uh, we have an understanding of that. Then I'm going to jump into the uh, project and how we're going to do the project, okay? So uh, one of the ways that we needed to, we need to explain basically how the moon came to be, because if we look at the other four, three planets, basically the inner planets, they really don't have moons. Uh, Mercury and Venus do not have moons at all, zero moons whatsoever. Uh, Mars has a couple of objects in there that are extremely small, and they are not really considered moons in the sense that it is moons. It's most likely captured basically asteroids. Okay, but the Earth has a moon, and it's a big moon. As a matter of fact, it's bigger than Pluto in terms of mass. So it's a very, very massive object that the Earth has. And we needed to explain that. So there were some basically way, or at least some competing theories uh, trying to explain it. One explanation is that the moon must have been probably formed as another planet in the, in the, in the, in the uh, inner uh, planets, in the inner uh, basically solar system. So at some point, probably we have had five planets orbiting the sun. One of them was a small planet, which was the moon, but it was orbiting probably very close from the sun from the Earth, I'm sorry, around the Sun, and uh, to a point, at some point, it was captured by the Earth. So that was a theory. Okay, If that's true, then its structure should not be different than that of the Earth, because it was formed in the same region of the Earth. A clear giveaway that this is not a good theory is the density of the Moon. If you look at the density of the Moon and compare it to that of the Earth, there is a big difference between the two. The Earth's density is 5.5 grams per cubic centimeter, and the Moon's density is 3.3 grams per cubic centimeter. This is a big difference. It's not a fraction only. So indicating that the Moon's, excuse me, structure is different. And the big difference is the iron. The, the Moon does not have as much iron as the Earth uh, did. So it could not have been the case. So this is not a good theory. Other models trying to explain, could it have been from the Earth and basically a, uh, at some point, because probably the Earth was spinning so fast that it lost part of its uh, layers, that it shed them because of that speed, and in doing so, it slowed down. And then that, what it lost is the moon. That's probably another explanation. That does not explain another, another uh, uh, first of all, Still, the density is problem, so it has to be comparable to that of the uh, the, the crust or the uh, the upper structure of the Earth. And then the other problem is that the 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 uh, the composition itself of the Moon from the rocks that we brought them from there does not support this theory. So there were all kinds of theories. One of them that really stuck out in terms of how the Moon formed is that probably there was another planet that was orbiting a Mars-sized planet. I mean, if you read about it, it's called Thea, actually, and uh, that's how it was uh, named, that formed in the same neighborhood of the Earth. But instead of being just captured, it actually collided with the Earth. That explains a lot of things. And I will talk about the what it explains. So first of all, this planet must have formed in the same neighborhood of the Earth, and it must have been orbiting the Sun, but it was probably maybe in the same orbit of the Earth. Okay. And then as it formed, it collided with the Earth. I mean, because of its proximity of the Earth, it collided with the Earth. And that collision, and that collision must have happened very, very soon, okay? Very, very quick from the formation of the Earth because of the fact that some rocks on the moon, because of their, basically when we analyzed, when we did basically the, the radiometric dating on them, we found out that their age is slightly less than that of the Earth. So it must have formed immediately. I mean, the collision must have came immediately after the Earth is formed. That's one thing. The other thing also, the moon is, 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 is at least the surface of the moon, is uh, littered with, with impact craters. And those, they happen immediately after the solar system has formed. So that whatever has formed the moon, including this, this theory, must have happened early on 
when the when the the Earth has formed before it even cooled. Okay, so the collision happened early on, and that explains the structure of the Moon in terms of its uh, its uh, its uh, because as the collision happened, material scattered from the Earth, and of course it's mainly the mantle, but also part of it was actually from the original structure of that planet. Okay. And uh, that explains also the different materials that it has that did not exist on the Earth, at least in terms of proportions. And also, uh, it explains also another thing that we're going to talk about, and that is the actual tilt of the orbit of the Moon with respect to the, the equator of the Earth and with respect to ecliptic. There is actually an, an inclination between 18 and 29 degrees that could only have, could only have explain, been explained by some sort of a collision at the right angle, okay? So this is the numerical uh, simulations and the models that we have. If we did a collision at specific angle, it gives you that specific tilt. So everything seems to fit together with this model now. Everything seems to be fit, to fit together with this model. That a Mars-sized object must have impacted the Earth early on at a specific angle, that to explain the, the, the different, basically the composition, if you wish, of the moon and the way it's orbiting the earth right now. And the fact that we actually have a big moon to begin with, okay? The earth has a big moon also to begin with. So all of this fit together in this picture and that is how the moon has formed, okay? Obviously you're supposed to read in detail the specific sections of this unit to go through the explanations in more detail and more in depth. Again, when you look at the moon, first of all, it has two main sides. The side that faces us all the time, which is this one, and the side that faces us away from, from the earth. The reason why that is, is because of the last point, the fact that the moon is tightly locked with the earth in a sense that if early on the Earth, actually there is all kinds of studies indicating that the, early, uh, the Earth itself was spinning faster and the Moon was spinning faster, but because they are tightly locked, they are means that they are very close from one another to impact each other gravitationally due to the force of gravity. Then the Earth slowed down, the Moon also must have slowed down so that the Moon itself, because it's the smaller body, must be uh, in sync internally in a sense that as it spins around its own axis, it's moving around the earth so that there's always one face that is facing the earth in there. And this is a 50-50 basically uh, a chance. It could have been the other side or this side which happened to be this side that is visible to us. The other side is slightly different in structure in terms of uh, it's the, the, the density if you wish or the proportion of the lowlands versus the uh, the uh, the uh, the highlands okay this one is almost 50 50 the other one is slightly mainly the, uh, the there is slightly difference in terms of the ratios okay again the lowlands are this ones that are dark colored and the highlands they are this light colored indicating this is basically how much reflection is coming from the sun there is structure in here that is reflected of that composition which is mainly uh, different kinds of rocks and uh, aluminum and different kind of composition that gives you this higher reflectivity and because it's higher you have this one. In here it's mainly basaltic structure basically indicating that it has a form from some sort of a volcanic flow at some point. As a matter of fact if you look at the impacts in terms of craters uh, and the highlands there is more impacts that are in the in the lowlands in here, indicating that the lowlands must be of a younger age than the uh, the highlands. As a matter of fact, when we did the radiometric dating of them, we found that there is actually one of them is between 3.3 and 3.9 billion years, and the other one, which is 4.1 and 4.4 billion years, immediately after the solar system would form about 4.5 billion years. So again, these are all the rocks, and hence it has. It has, uh, it has been uh, at least, how should I say? Both of them were exposed to the same number of impacts. However, this had volcanic activity that erased the early, active, the early uh, impact that happened on its surface. And then it cooled down 
and then after that, all of the impact that came along after that, they were actually, they still uh, are visible. So that is actually uh, the explanation. So the rock itself, the moon itself, although it was a smaller in mass, uh, it was actually active. It was, had some geology and that's what the uh, what these volcanoes were, but it cooled quickly compared to the earth because it has less mass to begin with, okay? So this is basically in terms of the overall structure of the moon as compared in, in addition to the craters that I mentioned and the fact that you had this, this volcanic activity and these are the rays that I was talking about that are emanating. This is called the Tico basically a, a, a crater, okay? And these are the different impacts that we have had in here. We have had uh, since, I mean, in 1969, we landed on the moon, and then we have had some so many missions to the moon, but the, the moon basically fell out of uh, interest, if you wish, compared to the other uh, objects, like, uh, like, for example, Mars. However, the moon is still an interesting object in itself because it tells us about the history of the entire solar system in terms of impact, what happened to it, and so on and so forth. So this is really still a very, very important object in here on its own. Had it orbited the, the, the sun instead of the earth, it would have been another planet just like Mars. And, and it's a lot smaller, of course, than Mars and uh, Mercury, but it's still a moon within its own right, okay? It would have been probably a smaller planet, but it would have been a planet on its own. <laughs> so this is the overall structure in terms of the outside. In terms of the inside, uh, moon still has moon quakes, okay? albeit they're a lot less than the Earth because of the fact that it cooled drastically, but it still has, uh, has quakes for two reasons, actually. It's not just because of the uh, high temperature inside, and that probably causes some of the quakes, but it's still the main quakes are due to the tidal locking with the Earth in the sense that this is basically all the time. It's just like the tides we have on the oceans. It's also its own surface is subject to this tidal forces and that causes quakes also in its surface and that moon quakes actually tells a, tell us about its own structure and its own structure it has a very very small core relatively speaking compared to its own size and that core is actually molten also uh, some sort of a silicate iron composition in a sense it's less dense than that of the of the of the of the earth but it's still molten nonetheless because of the still uh, remnant heat in its own core. So it's still hot enough, but not hot enough to cause basically a, uh, all kinds of activities on its surface or anything like that. It has a mantle, it has a crust, and its upper surface is actually made out of those rocks and actually dust also that is remnant from the impact that shattered a lot of its own upper, uh, upper rocks. So that's basically how the, uh, the, 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 the structure of the moon is. Okay. Again, I talked several times about its rotation and the fact that its axis itself is tilted with respect to the ecliptic. First of all, the, ecliptic, the Earth itself is tilted by 23 degrees with respect to the, uh, the ecliptic, which is where all of the planets are supposed to exist. And then you have the equator of the Earth, which has that angle, and the moon itself, which is, goes up and down by 18 degrees or 29 degrees, depending on the time it goes in and out. So that could be explained also by that impact uh, uh, that the Earth has had from that Mars-sized object that formed the moon. So that is actually part of the explanation for the moons and how it has formed and the model fits pro properly with this one. So this is the entire unit in a nutshell. I hope you guys do not consider this one as a substitute for reading the materials. So you're still supposed to go through all of this unit. And if you have any questions, please let me know. So this is basically the entire unit. In terms of assignments for this week, as I was saying, the biggest assignment, of course, is the midterm itself. Okay. So this is by far the main thing that we have to focus on. And by finishing, first of all, the review and doing that one. So let me talk briefly, and we're going to talk more in detail about this, this project, okay? So let me open it. Okay. It's not letting me open it as a student because it says that it's locked until October 4th at 8 a.m., which is fine. 
it is allowing you to work on your exam mainly. But as I was saying, so it's giving me just the rubric and how it's going to be graded, which is an important point on its own. Uh, while you're doing this project, please look out at the at the at the rubrics. Okay, the rubric will tell you exactly how it's going to be graded. So it's very important to follow the rubric itself and put yourself check marks. Did I do this? Looks good. Put a check mark. Did I do this? Does it look good? Is it? Are you happy with the answer? If it is correct and everything, put a check mark on it and move on. As you move along, you're going to finish at the end. Did I put the last point in here? Does it look good? And if everything looks beautiful and it's uh, as it's supposed to be, as it's supposed to be fulfilling all of the requirements of the rubric and all of that, then you have completed the task. So let me leave the student view and see if I can see it from the vantage point of the actual thing. So this is a project, first of all. Obviously, while you're doing this today or tomorrow, or even on Sunday, you're not going to be able to see but the rubric. Okay, you're not going to see the details of it here. Let me open it. Okay, I'm going to download the PDF file. First of all, there are two components in here that you need to understand. First of all, there is the instructions in here. And then there is this PDF file. The PDF file is not a requirement. It's an option. As you can clearly see, see in here, you may, okay? It's not that you have to. So you may skip this PDF file if you choose to, or you may use it if you want to. So because of this option in here, okay? I wanted to make sure this one is clear for you guys while you're working in this project, that this is not a requirement. Okay? Let me open the instructions, though, because that's where everything is happening so that I understand what's going on. So the project itself deals with the retrograde motion of Mars. That is the main topic. But hidden underneath is actually the retrograde motion of not just Mars, of different objects, namely Mercury, Venus, of course, the Earth. That's what we're looking for, this retrograde motion. That's what we want to understand. Why the objects in the sky appear to be moving in one way and then all of a sudden uh, turn around and move in the opposite direction and then they switch back to where they were coming from. They have an object going this way and then decides to move back and then goes in the same direction as it was going to begin with. So that is the retrograde motion, okay? So during the initial motion, that's a normal motion. Then all of a sudden it's going backward. That is the retrograde motion. And then it moves forward. So we don't care about that part, but we want to understand what's going on. We want to see why Mars does that. And as it turns out, it's not only Mars that does that, almost all of the other objects. And here I have planet Mercury, planet Venus, planet Mars, planet Jupiter, planet Saturn, and this dwarf planet series, which is between Mars and Jupiter. That too does it, okay? In here, it's telling me how many months the period, okay? Almost three months, it goes once around the, uh, the sun. 2.89 is almost three months, okay? 7.38, slightly more than seven months and a fraction of a month, seven and a half months if you want to approximate to seven and a half months. Okay, the Earth does it in exactly 12 months. Uh, Mars goes around the sun in 22.6 months, almost two years it goes once around the sun. Ceres goes 55 months. 55 months is almost five years for it to go once around the sun. Uh, Jupiter, 142 months. 142, that's 12 years and what is it? Yeah, 12 years and something, okay? Uh, okay, ridiculous numbers in here, 356 months for Saturn. As they are moving, all of these objects, they do show that motion, that apparent retrograde motion, okay? With the exception that Mars is so obvious to us. And then later on, Venus also was, uh, uh, was shown to do the same thing. 
But then later on, it turns out that all of the other objects more or less do a retrograde motion. So we wanted to understand what's going on. There are two models, and I know one of you guys asked me this question. And I want to go back into this, the answer to this one. In one model where the Earth is the center of the solar system, where all of the other objects move around the Earth. So what's going on in this case is a planet, like for example, uh, it doesn't matter, Ma Mars, for example, is spinning around the Earth in an orbit that is actually circular in path two. Okay, so at some point it's in this one. This is when we caught it right now. Okay. So before there was another circle when it was in here, when it was position one. When it's in position three, the circle actually has to go about position three and move around. When it's in position four, the circle has to go around position four and so on. So this circle is moving around in a big circle. So if I track its position, throughout several weeks or several basically uh, days of the week. And I look at it, it appears to be at some point, it's still moving forward in the sky as I was looking at it. If I take the earth and draw a line from the earth to one, I will find this projection in the sky. It looks like it's in here in the sky. Okay. If I take, I don't know, can I draw on this thing in here or not? I don't know if I, this is the browser anyway. If I take a line from one to two and then project it on the night sky, it appears to be. So initially it was here in the night sky. Now it has moved in here. So if I take a line and draw it and cross it to three, it's going to be appearing here. So initially it was here, two and three. So this is its projection. If I draw a line from the earth to the uh, four and then position four, it's going to be moving in here. Remember it was here, two, three and four. Okay. If I draw a line from one to five, it appears to be actually just below four. So it would have been one, two, three, four, and then five. It has moved back in the, in the, uh, in the night sky. So this is, this line in here represents the night sky, basically what I see in the night. So if I draw a line from one, from the earth to six, and then project it, it's going to be moving further back and so on and so forth. Seven, it's moving back. Eight, now it appears to be moving in the same direction. Nine, it has moved to the same direction. 10, it has moved forward. And 11, it has moved forward. So if I take it from the vantage point of a heliocentric, I mean, of a geocentric model, where the Earth is the center of the solar system, I can explain the retrograde motion of Mars. Also, if I take the sun now, the center of the Earth, okay? and draw a line from the Earth to Mars. So it's still now, but of course the Earth is moving a lot faster than Mars. Mars from one to position nine, it has moved through this arc. Whereas the Earth from one to nine, it has moved through this arc. Call it months if you want to, okay? From month one, to month nine, position one to position nine, the earth moved, moves through a bigger arc than the uh, Mars is. Because remember the periods here, what is the periods? Mars does 22.6 months for one year, whereas the earth does it in 12 months. So in the heliocentric model, I take again a line from the earth and cross it through the line from the uh, the, the sun, uh, through uh, Mars. On the same time, okay, we're looking at it. So one represents the position one. So in here, it's going to be this line. From position two to position two, it's going to be this line. From position three to position three, it's going to be this line. Again, Mars appears to be moving forward in the night sky. From position four to position four, it's going to be backward. Position five to five, it's going to be backwards. Six to six, it's going to be backwards. Seven to seven, it's going to be, it's going to start to move forward actually. Eight to eight is going to be moving forward and nine to nine is going to be moving forward again. So I can explain the same phenomenon with the heliocentric model. Whether I use this model, the geocentric model, the old model, the incorrect model, or I use the heliocentric model, which is the correct model. Okay, and then 
since we have divided the, uh, the planets into the ones that are outside of the Earth, like Mars, and Jupiter, and Ceres, and all of the other objects, but we have two pro pro objects that are inside. So now we go in detail about how to do the calculations. So this is the formula that we have to, know, to use. TE is always 12. That's the period of the Earth. That's 12. T depends on the planet. T for Venus, for, uh, for I'm sorry, for uh, Mercury is 2.89. For Venus is 7.38. For Mars is 22.6. So this is the formula that we have to use in here for the To find the actual period time for this retrograde motion. That's basically the calculation. Okay. What are those two bars in here? If you didn't do algebra, what this bars means is ignore the sign. So if the answer is negative, take it positive. If the answer is positive, leave it positive. So remember, your calculator is going to give you a plus sign or a minus sign. Do not write those. That's what that means. Write S without either the plus or the minus. This and algebra is called the absolute value. So the absolute value is ignoring both sides because it's clear that 12 minus 2.89 is positive. 12 minus 7.38 is positive, but 22, or I'm sorry, 12 minus 22.6 is negative. So if I plug in for Mars, I'll find a negative number. Ignore the negative sign, that's the point. Calculators, if it's positive, they don't give you the positive, they drop the positive. But if it's negative, they put it in negative sign. So ignore that sign, that's all. That's what these bars mean, the two lines, okay? Again, we're going to go in far more in depth in here to understand here. There were a bunch of questions in here that I skipped in purpose because we're not doing this one in detail, but I'm hoping that you guys can at least have a sense of what this project is. This is not a replacement of what we need to do. So let me switch back to student view. We do that. Uh huh. It's letting me look at it because I went to it early on. So again, if I do it from the student view now, it just show me the rubric, which is an essential part of, the, of this, this activity. Anyway. So this is in a nutshell what we have this week. We have the objective. Uh, the discussion item is still, make sure you finish your review. Okay. Finish your review by Wednesday. I know this was similar to last week because of the important because of the importance of the actual exam itself. And then next time when we meet, actually we're gonna get into more detail. Of course, we, has, we have more units coming down the road to cover talking about Mercury and the other objects in the solar system. But uh, the thing with it is, uh, unit 39 is not part of the exam. So what I covered in terms of the moon, how it was formed and everything else, it's not really uh, covered in this exam. But uh, other uh, stuff, also the project itself is not gonna be available until after the exam, not after, during the exam, because the exam is due on uh, Monday evening. So uh, this is basically in a nutshell, what I have in mind. And I know at least another person was here and she left. And uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. I already sent a message earlier in the day today at 7.30 in the morning to all of my classes that I will be on campus on Thursday morning. So if you want to meet, please send me a request no later than, uh, than uh, Wednesday noon so that we can plan it accordingly. Of course, because of the short time the appointments will be basically uh, on an as, uh, as, uh, what do we call it? As first come, first serve, basically, okay? If you really need to meet, please let me know as soon as possible so that we can plan it. And I will see you in person on uh, Thursday. Let me stop sharing the screen. And I'll see you guys next time and good luck with the preparation for the exam and the actual exam too.
and you will be hearing from me through a lot of throughout the week for messages concerning about completing the review and getting ready for the exam and things of this nature okay thank you